Hey everybody, you got the wingman here and today I'm going to do a follow-up on yesterday's video about campground rules. Now today I'm going to tell you as a former campground owner how I built a very profitable business. I'm going to reveal my secret if you will. As you'll see it's not magic. It also was not easy. And part of my success had to deal with campground rules. It did. But most of my success, most of my success in building the business came down to realizing something that every other successful campground owner and their staff does. It's something I believe that can help others. Whether you're running a business, you're running a family, I'll give you the bottom line at the end of this video. But for now, let's roll back the clock to when I was, uh, I guess, in the thick of it, running my campground. And it's what I believe is an important mindset to have. I bet you didn't know that the campground you're about to go to next is run and managed by a dictator. I'm going to tell you about it right now. Hey everybody, I'm Alan Warren, the RV Wingman. And what in the world do I mean about uh, dictators in a campground? I'm going to tell you here in just a second. But first, make sure you hit the subscribe button on YouTube and uh, hit the bell there right next to it. That way you will receive a notification each time we release a new video. Also, um, I want to tell you these Be A Better Camper videos are going over pretty well. I know it sounds like we do a lot of griping and moaning and complaining and we're pretty good at it. I do say so myself. But uh, my wife and I own a campground here in Central Texas. We absolutely love it. We love about 90, 80, no, we love about 98% of the people that we see that come through here. And these videos are designed to help make you think. Think of other people. Think of the campground. Think of the people that work there. Think of the campers that you're camping next to in hopes that we can all be more thoughtful, more respectful, uh, more kind, I guess and all we can all become a better camper. So what do I mean about being a dictator? Um, campgrounds have rules, obviously, but uh, it doesn't mean that, you know, it's like if the speed limit is 70, at 71, they don't bust your chops. If the quiet time at a campground is at 10 p.m., at 10.01, we don't bust your chops and kick you out, but we could. And just like I would think a police officer that if he thinks you're a jerk and you're a troublemaker and you're acting whatever you're acting like behind the wheel and he's looking for a reason to stop you 71 miles an hour, one mile an hour over might be a good enough reason to stop you. And maybe you should have been stopped if you're a jerk in the campground. And there are far too many of them nowadays. I'm sorry. This is the truth. This is what I think. I think that campground owners all around this country, everywhere see too many people that are disrespectful, that are not thoughtful. They think the world revolves around them and, uh, and it's not good. So being a dictator in a campground, I call it being a benevolent dictator. We can forgive people. We can bend the rules a little bit and we want to bend the rules. The rules are not rigid. You know, there's a few of them that are pr pretty rigid, but, but you got to be respectful of others. And at the end of the day, the buck stops with the campground owner, the campground staff. The last thing we want to do, I promise you, is to kick somebody out. We don't want to do that. Every time when something happens, it's like, really? Really? Okay. And I'll go and I'll jump right in it. I don't jump in up here. I wade in. I try to be so nice. I think most campgrounds do. If somebody, a campground, a member of the staff, the campground owner, the manager comes up and says something to you, they're probably going to start out down here. They're not going to start up. They're not going to do that. They may feel like doing that, but they're going to start out down here. Please be respectful. Please listen. Please don't defend. I couldn't do it. That's not the way to approach it. Just like with a police officer. I was not speeding. <laughs> you lose. Don't do that at a campground. Be respectful. Now, the campground owner and the staff, we're not perfect by any means, but understand you're in their place of business. There's a code of conduct, an, a, a, an unwritten code of behavior. If you're in a library, you're supposed to behave a certain way, right? If you're in church, you're supposed to behave a certain way. When you're in a campground, you're supposed to behave a certain way. And you need to understand Whatever that means, the world does not revolve around you and your radio station and you and whatever you want to say and your dirty jokes. And there's a time and a place for that. But campgrounds maybe aren't the place 
to tell those dirty jokes. So again, the dictators that run these campgrounds, we're benevolent dictators. We love our campers. We don't want to have as many rules as we have, but people make us have them because if we don't have them, uh, you know what happens. As I said, we have far more people than we've ever had before that are camping today. And uh, that's a great thing. It's great on so many different levels, but it also presents some new problems for campground owners, for the environment. It presents a lot of problems. And we're good enough, folks. I'm telling you, we can do this. We can be better campers. We can be more thoughtful. We can listen to our neighbor and their story. We can be helpful. There was a time, you know, I, I promise you, there was a time not too long ago when you go on a campground, every single person will wave, hey, how's it going? I don't know what happened to that. I want that to come back. Be a better camper. When you're a better camper, you're a kind camper. You're a thoughtful one. You're not some, you know, uh, doing something for everybody. No, you're just a decent human being, warm, the way it used to be. We can do that. We don't have to be, who did you vote for? I think this is bad. I think that's bad. Leave all that crap at the house, wherever you live. Don't take it with you in the campground. Find people. We have people from all walks of life in our campground. I promise you this is the way it is all over the country. Young and not so young and, and educated and not very educated and, and people with money and not very much money. And they all get along. You know why? Because they're good people. Down deep inside, they're good people. Try to forgive. Try to be kind. Try to be thoughtful. Follow the rules. I have a novel idea. If you haven't read the rules yet with the campground that you're getting ready to visit, on the way to that campground, how about reading them? Whoever's driving, somebody else, pull up the rules. Oh, did you know we're not supposed to do such and such? Talk about it. Know what, where you're going. We have people that show up at our campground. Promise this happens all over the country. People that show up at our campground, eh, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, here's our rules. Yeah, okay. They don't even read them. Well, I didn't know that. Let's see. It's on our website. We tell you about them when we send you your uh, email confirmation. Um, we ask you to go to the website. When you come in, we give you the written rules again. You sign that you read them. And then you say, well, I didn't know I signed that. Take the time, wherever you go camping, take the time. You'll have a better trip, I promise you. And then the benevolence of the dictator, the benevolence of the staff will come out. Another little tip, piece of advice, the people around here, people at campgrounds that I know, work their butts off. You know, Disneyland may be the happiest place on earth, but for the people that work at Disneyland, not so much. They are there to make sure you have a good time, that you are safe. My staff, the staff at campgrounds, is there to make sure that you are safe and, and other people are safe. They're looking at it a whole different level than what you're looking at. It's like that movie, A Few Good Men. You remember that? Jack Nicholson said, you need us on that wall. And campgrounds need somebody on that wall. And that's who the staff is. They're not trying to be ugly. They're not trying to order you around. They want you to have a good time. We want you to come back, tell your friends about us. Every campground is that way, but they are here for a reason. So if you get an opportunity when you go camping, read the rules before you get there, understand them. If you have any questions, then uh, ask about them when you know you arrive at the campground. Another thing, just say thank you. If you see the camper, if you see somebody out there, uh, the, the uh, camp host or the manager doing something, thank them. Tell them you appreciate them doing a good job. You know, everybody is, uh, today we need a little pat on the back. A positive word can go an awful, awful long way. That video was shot about three years ago and I no longer own the campground, but you know what? In the 10 years that we did, I learned so much. I grew so much. I realized that the biggest factor in my success, in our success, was simply being there. Being there, being visible, being engaged with campers. Not a drive-by and wave kind of deal, but engaging, stopping by a site, yakking for a minute, picking up a piece of trash or straightening something out, being visible. Like I said, being engaged. It was the best way to keep everyone in good spirits and minimize the troublemakers. It also showed that I cared. I wish there was a better way, an easier way to build a profitable business with happy customers, but you know what? I couldn't find one. And it wasn't simply by adding more rules either. 
In retrospect, I believe that there is no shortcut to the most meaningful things in life. Whether it's building a profitable business or raising, I don't know, a strong and independent child or becoming more successful in anything, it takes the commitment of time, T-I-M-E, time and follow through and being there even when you're tired, even when it's uncomfortable, especially when it's uncomfortable. Now as an old man, I want to think that I've become pretty good at seeing businesses and people that are a success and those that are on the pathway of success. And it's the ability to see those who truly care. But what do you think? Is there an easier way to build a business or a strong family? If so, I promise you, I would really like to know. All right, beginning New Year's Eve, we'll be back on track with brand new videos. And in the meantime, if you have a situation where you would like my perspective, maybe a problem you're having with your RV, or maybe you just like my thoughts on a particular issue, or even some current event, I don't know, my contact info is in the description of this video down below, and I do enjoy hearing from everyone. All right, Alan Warren here, the RV Wingman, reminding you, be safe, have fun, play nice, and don't leave your good manners at home. I'll see you next time. Hey, it's the RV Wingman, and if you're looking for an honest RV dealer, one that will work hard to earn and keep your business, I hope you'll check out the RV dealers I trust. I really do trust them. I think you can trust them as well. Go to rvdealersitrust.com. That's rvdealersitrust.com.